flows. Journey of enlightenment begins with who am I? The moment you learn the art of living, you have arrived. Living in harmony, living in eternal freedom, the ray of awakening has started reaching your inner core and then radiating through your presence. Know this awakening. Awakening opens up your eyes. This is the beginning. Enlightenment gives you new eye and verily insight into life and living, a new vision. This requires the dissolution of ego or identity as the beginning. With enlightenment, there is only awareness of oneness and harmony, not even you. Enlightenment cannot be realized through logic. However, logic can be helpful. This realization cannot happen through devotion, austerity or any such thing. Certainly these can be helpful and take you up to a certain distance. Thereafter the journey is pathless and alone. For enlightenment you need not pass any test. For this you need to wait patiently without any anxiety. Then one day, like the dawn of realization, it is visible. As an individual, you are plagued with myriad desires. Remember, when a thought or desire arises, man vibrates a certain energy. This energy is measured in frequency. All the enlightened ones, all the religions, agree on one thing only. Their disagreements are many, but there is one agreement among, amongst all, and that is that man, because of his ego, is close to reality. The ego is the only barrier, the feeling that I am. On this point, Buddhas, Christs and Krishnas all agree. And because they all agree, it seems to me that this is the basic thing in all the religious endeavor. All else is accidental. This is essential that you are debarred because of your own ego. What is this ego? Of what it is it composed of? How does it arise? And why does it become so important? Look at your mind. Because you cannot understand the phenomena of ego theoretically, you can only understand it existentially. Look at your mind. Observe it and you will come to a deep understanding and if you can understand what the go is, there is no problem. It can be dropped easily. Rather, there is no need to drop it. If you can understand it, the very understanding becomes the dropping because the ego is created through your non-understanding. It is created through your sleepiness. When you are angry, your frequency differs than when you are afraid or loving or guilty or shameful or joyous or full of lust, etc. The awakened one can only decipher your frequency at which you are vibrating. This will determine the wavelength or strength or intensity of your love, joy and awakening. It simply means how effective is your love energy, etc. How far it can go, how capable it is 
to bring about an effective transformation. Remember, the existence does not understand your desires or thoughts. Each of these create energy. Based on the energy you are vibrating at and its frequency, you will attract complementary energies, frequencies, and existence supports you in that process. It is like tuning in your radio set or television set for better clarity and effectiveness. Just as you can tune your music or frequency that resonates with you, you have to tune in into the frequency that resonates with your growth and transformation or the energy you want to manifest through your life in myriad forms. How to begin this process of transformation? The question, who am I, is basic. This is the point from where inner journey begins. And certainly this is one we begin to forget to ask as we grow older. But that question is the start of all creativity. When you were younger, surely you had those nights when you sat st staring up at your ceiling, wondering where it all came from. Those moments are the beginning of presence, understanding <coughs> that you are a drop of water in the ocean, vast ocean. But you are not the droplet. You are the ocean and ocean is you. The universe is moving with life energy. That same energy is within you. Such understanding is the essence of enlightenment the word enlightenment may not exist as concept in other paths. However, in its essence, such expressions, such experiences is the core of many paths like Sufism, Sanatan, Nanak's path, Christianity or any other path or Advait Vedanta. Only one thing is certain, nobody can prevent anybody from becoming enlightened. There is no power in the world which can prevent anyone from becoming enlightened because enlightenment is your nature and the flowering. The only thing is this, if you do not wish to be enlightened and remain the way you are. You are already enlightened, but you want to deny it or you do not want, allow, you want to allow it to blossom. The seed is there, but the seed has to be nourished and nurtured by you for it to attain the process so that it reaches to the point when it begins to spread its beauty and fragrance out of your being. You just do not know. You have forgotten it. Indeed, enlightenment is a forgotten language. Indeed, it is the only language worth using. It has only to be remembered and the way to remember is to disidentify with all the conditionings that you are infused into at birth. And you go on accumulating out of your process of interaction in the outer world of objects and beings through your education system 
through your religious belief system and so on and so forth. They may be there. Let them be there. The problem with you is that you want to live with all your conditionings, belief system, religions, and you still want to seek enlightenment. Certainly, it is neither seeking not possible to attain through seeking. It is the realization of your nature. But if your nature is false, conditioned, then what can be done? And it is the realization of your essential nature and happens once all unnecessary burden of conditionings belief system is dropped. Remember, I am not one of them. I am the knower. I am the seer. I am the observer. And I am the awareness. This is the essence of self-inquiry. Who am I? And the awareness cannot be, be touched by any conditioning. But we live on the circumference, guided by our conditionings, ego identity, and belief systems. Awareness cannot be touched by any of such conditioning. Conditionings are just like dust which has gathered on the mirror. It can be washed away once you are ready, and the mirror and the mirror will come to its purity immediately. Only if mirror warns. In your case, you are so obsessed with all this dust that you do not want it to be washed. No dust can destroy the reflecting surface of the mirror. It can only hide it. Conditionings hide you, but they cannot destroy your essential nature. Just as dust can be removed from the mirror, conditionings can be removed very easily. But you have to take a resolution to remove it. You are not part of the conditionings. Instead, you are the watcher. However deep inside man has the glimpse of what seems like centuries of conditioning, this creates the feeling that enlightenment may not be possible, while others might. Such an attitude is a natural mistrust that man has to break because this attitude prevents him from becoming enlightenment or realizing the enlightenment. Becoming is not the right word, but this is the only word that we can see, say. So it is the realization from being, from realizing the state of enlightenment. Such feeling arises for many seekers at different stages, but it has to be explained so that you can understand clearly what is happening. The process continues. Enough for now. The other aspect, various aspects of ego and the process of enlightenment in through journey of enlightenment through various other paths. Only this much for now. Mm -hmm.